Hey guys, welcome back to another baking tutorial. And if you're new here, welcome. I am Betty. I am a baking instructor over at bakerbetty.com and here on this YouTube channel. Now today we are going to learn how to make a pavlova. And this is part of our meringue series. We are learning all about the different methods of how to make meringue, and then I'm sharing a few different recipes with you that use those meringues. So today we are going to make a pavlova, and if you aren't familiar with that, it's a really large baked meringue shell. It gets really crispy on the outside, and then it's kind of soft and marshmallowy in the middle. And then it's typically topped with a soft whipped cream and then some kind of sauce. It can be a fruit sauce or a ganache or really anything you want. So today we are going to make a uh, chocolate ganache to top our pavlova and then we'll add some fresh raspberries on top. So to make a pavlova, we are going to use the French meringue technique. And if you remember from our first meringue video where we talk about all of the different methods, the French meringue technique is the easiest technique to make. So you want to start by separating your eggs with any meringue recipe. You need egg whites to start with, and we need to be really careful that we don't get yolk in our egg whites. Otherwise, our, our meringue is not going to whip up to stiff peaks. So I'm going to start by separating my eggs. Now, every time I separate eggs, I like to have three bowls. So one bowl is to crack my egg in, and then the other two bowls are to put my whites and yolks in. I don't like to separate my eggs right over the bowl where I'm keeping my whites because if I accidentally break a yolk, that yolk is going to con contaminate all of the whites. So I just crack my egg right into one bowl and then I use clean hands to go ahead and pick the yolk up out of the white and then I'm gonna put the yolk in one bowl and then I'm going to put the whites in my other bowl. So this way, if I do break a yolk, I'm not putting that yolk all into the whites that I've already separated. So this works really well with cold eggs. It's easier to separate with cold eggs, but you do want your whites to be at room temperature when you go to whip them into stiff peaks. So if you separate your eggs while they're cold, you wanna let the whites sit for, oh, about 30 minutes or so. Now these eggs are already at room temperature, so we're not going to have to wait. All right, and that is all of the whites that we need. Now I'll put these yolks aside. These yolks can be saved to use in a custard or if we're gonna make a lemon meringue pie later in this series, so you could keep the yolks to use in a filling for a meringue pie or something like that. Okay, so to start the meringue for our pavlova, we're going to start with just our egg whites along with um, some cream of tartar and a pinch of salt and some vanilla right in our mixing bowl. Now the cream of tartar is an acidic ingredient and that's going to help kind of stabilize the meringue. So if you don't have cream of tartar, you can substitute it for a little bit of lemon juice, but it's going to help keep our meringue really stable so that it holds into a really nice pavlova shell. So we wanna start whipping our egg whites on about medium speed with the whisk attachment of your mixer until they're starting to hold some soft peaks. And you need to do that before you add any of your sugar. If you start adding your sugar too early when you make your meringue, it won't hold as well. It'll start kind of weeping some liquid. So you want to make sure they get really whipped before you start adding the sugar. So I'm going to whip these and I'll show you what it looks like when you can go ahead and start adding your sugar. Okay, so I wanna show you what this looks like when you're ready to add your sugar. So the egg whites are really starting to hold some air 
and they're very, very soft, but you can tell that there's air whipped into them. And so now we can go ahead and add our sugar. Now, one of the most important parts when you make a French meringue is that the sugar needs to be added very, very slowly. This not only ensures that it completely dissolves into your egg whites, but it makes sure that the meringue is super stable. So I'm going to spoon my sugar in just about one spoonful at a time and wait about 10 to 15 seconds or so between each addition and let that mix before I add more. I'm going to do this on medium speed and then when all of the sugar is added, we can go ahead and increase the speed and make sure that gets to really stiff peaks. So I'm gonna turn this on and add the sugar. Okay, so all of the sugar has been added and I wanna show you, this has really gotten a lot thicker. You can see the peaks are stiffer, but they're still not completely stiff. So we are going to continue mixing this. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the speed up to high and let that whip until we get really, really stiff peaks. So you can stop periodically and check to see how your peaks are. You just wanna pull this up and see if they're standing up tall. That's pretty good. It is kind of drooping just a little bit. I'm probably gonna whip this just a little bit longer, but we're getting very, very close. And I think that's looking pretty good. Those are pretty stiff peaks. So we can go ahead and take our pavlova and shape it into the shell. Now the last thing we're going to do before we shape our shell is I have a little bit of cornstarch here and I'm just going to sprinkle that over the top of the meringue. And this is going to give it a little bit more stability since we are baking such a large shell. We're not making those little cookies like we did in our last video. We want it to be really stable. So I'm just going to fold that cornstarch in. And to fold, you wanna cut down through the meringue and bring the meringue that's on the bottom up to the top. Just be really gentle because we don't want to deflate it. Okay, so I have a sheet pan aligned with a piece of parchment paper. And to make our shell, we are just going to mound this up all in one big mound on the middle of the parchment paper. And then I'm gonna show you how to shape it to make it look really beautiful. Now we are going to try to shape this a little bit inspired by a pavlova that uh, Zoe Francois from Zoe Bakes has posted before. Um, it's just, it's a little bit different than a traditional pavlova. It's a little taller and I just think it looks really beautiful. So we're gonna try it out. Okay, so once it's all mounded up, we're gonna kind of smooth it out into one big circular kind of anthill looking mound. Now, if you want to do more of a traditional pavlova, you can, you'll kind of spread it out thinner, um, but this is going to be like a really tall pavlova show. So now we're going to give a little bit of an indentation right in the center to kind of be the place where all of our toppings are going to lay. So we're going to add some really soft whipped cream and some ganache and then berries. I'm actually going to scoop a little bit out. So we're making that little place for all of that to sit.
Okay, so I'm just gonna clean up the edges a little bit. And then we are going to use the offset spatula to make a pretty decorative crust on it. Okay, so now we're gonna take our offset spatula and we're gonna use it to just swipe up around the edges. to give it a really pretty decorative look. And I kind of lost my center there a little bit. I'm gonna kind of get that back. Okay, so now we are going to bake this at a really low temperature. We're gonna put it in the oven at 250 degrees for about 90 minutes and then we're gonna shut the oven off and just leave it to sit in there until it's completely cool. So you, whenever you're baking a meringue, you don't wanna open the oven. That change of temperature of letting heat out can really mess up the meringue and make it crack a lot. So we're gonna leave it in the oven, try not to open the door, and then when it's completely cooled, we will make our toppings for it. Okay, so our pavlova shell is completely finished. It sat in the oven for a few hours and it has completely cooled. It's really nice and crisp. And so you wanna make your toppings right before you are going to serve it. So I'm gonna make a really simple chocolate ganache and I have just some broken up pieces of chocolate here. You can use chocolate chips instead if that's what you have. And then I have some really hot, heavy cream. So I'm going to pour the cream just right over this chocolate and I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes to let the chocolate melt and then I'll come back and whisk it up. Now while that chocolate is melting, I'm going to go ahead and whip some cream. So I have some really cold, heavy cream here. Whenever you're making whipped cream, your cream needs to be cold or it will not whip up. So I'm just going to add that to my stand mixer with my whisk attachment. And I'm going to start whipping that. So I like to add to my whipped cream just a little bit of vanilla extract. I'm not even measuring it, I'm just going to eyeball it. And I like to add a little pinch of salt just to kind of help balance the sweetness because I'm also going to add a little bit of powdered sugar. Now you can make whipped cream without any sugar at all, but I like to add just a couple tablespoons. I like it just slightly sweet, but you can do the sugar to taste. Okay, and that's where I'm going to stop whipping it. It's much softer than what we were going for with the meringue. And we'll go ahead and set that aside for a second and then we're gonna come back to our ganache. So it's been enough time now that that chocolate should be completely melted. So I'm just going to take a little whisk here and I'm going to gently start right in the center of the bowl and just start making small little circles. And as the chocolate starts incorporating into the cream, then I can start moving out to the edges of the bowl. And that's it, that's really all ganache is. I am gonna put a little pinch of salt in here, again, just to balance the sweetness. But ganache is just melted chocolate with cream, that's it. Super, super easy to make. Okay, so I did let the ganache cool just slightly so that it wasn't quite so runny. And now we can go ahead and assemble our pavlova. So I have just a little cake stand here. I'm going to transfer the shell right on top. It's very delicate, so be gentle with it. And I'm going to start with ganache. So I'm going to put a decent amount right in the center so that it's kind of a little surprise when you cut into it. And I'm gonna drip a little bit over the sides just to give it that decadent look. I 
Okay, now I'm gonna pile some of the soft whipped cream right on top. And finish it off with some fresh berries. I have some raspberries here and then I'll do a few sprigs of mint just for some color. And then when you cut into this to serve it, you could always have a few more fresh berries and a little more whipped cream or chocolate on the side if people want that. And that is it. There's our beautiful pavlova all ready to be served. And if you have not seen the other videos in the meringue series, I'm going to leave a link down in the description box for the entire playlist. Coming up in the series, we are going to be doing a lemon meringue pie, and then we're also going to show you how to make macarons. So stay tuned for those other videos in this series. And if you aren't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscription button and ring the notification bell so you never miss a baking lesson. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I'm always happy to answer any of your questions, so you can leave those down in the comment section, and I'll see you all next time with another baking tutorial.